Thanks for taking the time for us to share some information about Mackie Designs and our 8-bus consoles. The first part of this video consists of short segments from our epic two-hour 8-bus video owner's manual. Only slightly shorter than a director's cut of how the West was won to the sound of music, our 8-bus video owner's manual covers every knob, button, and jack on the console. You'll get a copy if you purchase an 8-bus. But for now, what we've done is included some highlights of video and therefore deleted not only our training director's boring monologue and lots of tech stuff, but also Ernesto the Zucchini Juggler and How to Mic an Ugly Orange Table Lamp. Accordingly, the first part of this video is a little rough, and because it was part of a larger instructional video, it doesn't make several points that our rabid sales manager would like to hammer home. One, great support. When you buy an 8-bus console, you get access to friendly, knowledgeable tech support folks. You don't have to wait on hold for hours, and you don't have to go through a voicemail maze. 2. Built like a tank. 8-bus consoles' durability is legendary. They've survived millions of air miles on major tours, not to mention power surges, fires, floods, and earthquakes. 3. Studio-grade mic preamps. The high headroom, low noise, wide bandwidth, and sonic clarity of our discrete mic preamps is the equal of those on any mega console. Many of the world's top engineers and producers agree. 4. Proven by pros. Folks really use our console to produce stuff. Groups and artists including Queensryche, the Rembrandts, Yes, Brian Adams, Alex Lifeson, K.D. Lang, Yingve Malmsteen, Primus, Metallica, Def Leppard, and Madonna have tracked and or mixed down on Mackie 8 bus consoles. No other manufacturer of comparably priced consoles can list even a single artist, much less four television networks, three major record labels, and dozens of video post houses who use our consoles day in and day out. But enough with the boring lecture. It's on to the 8-Bus Channel Strip. The channel strips on all 8-Bus consoles and the 24E Expander are identical, only their number varies. 16 on the 16 8 24 on the 24 8, 32 on the 32 8, and of course, all 24 on the 24E Expander. The Channel Fader. Mackie 8 bus consoles use a 100 millimeter custom designed true logarithmic fader that is unlike that found on any comparably priced board. On many consoles, the fader's internal design makes it hard to get a smooth fade out. When you get past a certain point, there simply isn't any usable control left, making long, smooth fades frustrating if not impossible. This kind of fader is called a D-taper fader. When you look at the resistive element screen on it, you can see that they're quite simple. This graph shows gain versus travel for a D-taper fader. You can see that volume and gain don't follow each other very well, especially below about minus 20 dB. Mackie commissioned a completely new kind of 100 millimeter fader with a complex network of additional resistive elements all along their length. When you move a Mackie 8 bus fader, the taper is truly logarithmic and smooth to the ear. You can pull a gentle fade down that uses the entire length of the fader. For the technoids among you, a graph of fader travel versus gain shows the true logarithmic nature of the 8-bus's custom fader. The hypersensitive green LED is designed to give you a good visual indication of what's on the channel. Immediately next to the LED indicators is the channel's pan control. Mackie's management apologizes for the use of such an overly obvious pun, especially after the unequal <laughs> pun 
wondering the EQ section description. The creators of this video have been reprimanded and have promised to only employ subtle puns that elicit mild winces for the duration of this video. Two things set the pan controls on the Mackie 8 bus apart from its competition. Better attenuation and constant loudness. The pan pots on many comparably priced consoles provide as little as 50 dB of separation. That means that when you pan hard right or hard left, there's still audible signal in the other bus or main left right channel. The Mackie 8 bus console uses a custom taper potentiometer to achieve 87 dB of separation. You get full attenuation and no surprising level shifts caused by channel assignment or panning. We're going to start with a little bitty switch at the bottom of the EQ section that can come in very handy. The low cut filter. The low cut filter is 3 dB down at 75 Hz and mucho dB down lower than that. This sharp filter is great for getting rid of room rumble, traffic noise, wind noise, mic jiggles, and other very low frequency sound. And low cut can produce some very useful curves. Now we go to the controls that truly distinguish our 8 bus console from its comparably priced competitors. High mid consists of three controls. The normal boost cut knob, a frequency control, somewhat like the sweep control on other consoles, and a bandwidth control. Together, this true parametric EQ gives you, dare we say, unequal <laughs> control over the most critical frequency range. Before we start with the bandwidth control, let's digress a moment. One of the things that Greg Mackey noticed about lower priced consoles was how drastic their mid-range EQ sounded. Even in modest amounts, conventional swept mid-range sounds pretty drastic. It's okay for extreme PA adjustments, but not wide enough to gently alter multiple mid-range octaves. On the other hand, the mid-range EQ on classic British consoles sounds natural and musical and warm. Why? Because expensive consoles let you vary the bandwidth as wide as three octaves or more. Changes sound so gradual and smooth that you can add considerably more EQ than you thought possible. Yet it still sounds sweet and natural. And that's exactly what we've included on the 8-bus console. A bandwidth control that lets you vary the width of your mid-range EQ curve from three octaves wide to as narrow as one twelfth of an octave. The next high mid control is more familiar. It's the frequency center or sweep control. When combined with a variable bandwidth, a frequency sweep control becomes truly useful. Combined with a wide bandwidth, it lets you do gentle, overall equalization that's simply not possible with conventional swept mids. Being able to sweep a very narrow bandwidth lets you create a tighter notch filter than you could with a third octave equalizer. Or very narrow boosts that can add sheen to a cymbal or help distinguish between two similar instruments.
of course, if you're nostalgic for one and a half octave, fix sweat mid, found on our competitors' consoles, you can have that too, since it does have its application. The 8 Bus's low mid equalization is more conventional sweat mid range with boost and band center controls. Frequency center can be varied from 45 hertz. That ought to satisfy anyone's idea of low mid range. To 3000 hertz. Finally, the Mackie 8 Bus console has high and low shelving EQ. Because the 12 kilohertz high EQ works on a broad range of frequencies, in moderate doses it's quite musical sounding. That's because it cuts or boosts all the upper harmonics of a sound evenly. For example, it's great for putting shimmer in acoustic guitar or piano tracks. Low shelving EQ is fixed at 80 hertz. It's good for working on bass drum or bass guitar, fattening up a piano sound, or contouring a whole mix. Like high EQ, low EQ is a shelving control that affects the entire low end. To summarize, before you completely fall asleep, the 8 bus console offers unparalleled EQ flexibility, high shelving, a high mid range with almost 18k range, a traditional swept mid, low shelving, and low cut. Each 8 bus channel strip has six auxiliary sends controlled from four knobs. Aux sends can provide mixes for headphone cueing, PA monitor submixes, and most commonly for effects sends. The 8 bus aux sends have a very wide range of gain. The first half of each knob's rotation corresponds to the full range of a conventional console's aux send. But there's still more. Gain, that is. The second half of Mackie aux sends rotation provides you with 15 dB more gain, which can come in very handy when you want a lot of reverb, but not much dry signal. Solo is obviously handy for spot checking the presence and quality of individual inputs while setting up, recording, and mixing. Channel solo buttons also maintain stereo perspective. If a channel has been panned to the left or right, you'll hear the correct stereo perspective in your monitor speakers. When any channel strip solo button on the 8 bus console is pressed, its associated solo LED will glow steadily and the rude solo light on the master section will blink as annoyingly as allowed by international law and good taste. Solo has another very important function, setting levels for lowest noise and most headroom. Solo a channel and its operating level is shown on the main left right LED meters. We're almost done with the first and longest part of this video. But we've saved one of the most complex parts of the 8 bus channel strip until last. Mix B is sort of a channel strip within a channel strip. During tracking and overdubbing, Mix B gets its signal from the channel's tape return, allowing you to create a custom tape monitor submix. During mix down, Mix B gets its signal from the channel strip's mic or line input, 
adding an extra input per channel. Alternatively, during live or studio work, MixB can provide a custom mix taken from the channel strip. Since you have access to separate MixB pan, level, and EQ, you can build custom independent mixes for all sorts of purposes, including separate stereo broadcast feed or live two-track recording, custom headphone mix, mix minus bus, alternate stereo bus, quad or surround feed, you name it. Well, now that you're tan, rested, and ready, welcome to the master section of the 8-Bus Recording PA Console. Each fader controls the level of its mix with precise dB markings and a unity gain point mark conveniently right on the panel. The fader is located in the circuit after the submaster insert jack, but before the main left-right fader. The LR mix fader controls the level of the LR mix bus. This is the last gain control point. The main left-right fader is located in the circuit after the main insert jack, after the bus faders, and after the main bus inserts. That leaves one very important control section. The final part of the master section consists of six modules that are used for monitoring and communications. The MixB monitor section is quite straightforward. It lets you do two things. Remember when we confused you with the MixB section on each channel strip? Anything going through the channel strip's MixB section goes here, to the MixB monitor section. Its first function is to control the master level of the MixB bus. The second part of the MixB master section is an assign MixB to LR mix switch. When you press it, the MixB bus signal is added to the main LR mix. This is how you double the inputs available for mix down. Next to the MixB monitor are two identical phone sections. Each contains a stereo level control for the headphone outputs, a stereo solo switch, and five push buttons to select from the following signal sources. Monitor, MixB, AugSense 3 and 4, AugSense 5 and 6, and external. Why have so many headphone source options? I want to hear what the control room is hearing. I want more reverb. I want my own mix because I'm a drummer. Uh, I want to hear the uh, click track. Because you need the ability to create different headphone mixes for different people and applications, the five switches in each headphone section let you select any combination of a variety of sources. The next section is the monitor section. Here's where you control the volume and source going to control room monitors and the studio playback monitors. There is a stereo level control for the control room and another for the studio. A matrix of switches selects the stereo sources available to the speakers from LR Mix, Mix B, Tape, and External. You can select any combination of signal sources. The solo section contains the master level control for the stereo solo mix. When you set it at the center detent, it will match the level of the signals being soloed. This section also has the most obnoxious solo light allowed under international trade and safety regulations. We hope it gets your attention. Guys, get on with it. Get this video moving. Move on to the talkback section. Yeah. Finally, the last part of the 8-bus master section is the talkback section. Oh, my, I already made my bed. It has four momentary push-button switches. Gonna go play videos. Which let you arrogantly shout through a tiny little microphone to any combination of AugSend 1, AugSend 2, tape subgroups, which are the LR mix in the 8 subgroups, and phone studio. The aforementioned talkback microphone is located just above the LR mix fader. This ain't no Neumann, so don't attempt vocals through it. We wanted it to sound gritty and generally talkback-esque. Application of chewing gum to this orifice will degrade the performance further to simulate really beat-up AM radio production studios. The rear jack section. The connections to and from your multi-track recorder are on the rear panel of the 8-bus console. There are 16, 24, or 32 tape return jacks, depending on the model, and 24 submaster tape out jacks. Why are there 24 submaster output jacks on an 8-bus mixer? This is called triple bussing. 
When you send a signal to Submaster 1 output, for instance, it will appear at Submaster outputs number 1, number 9, and number 17. Now, whichever tracks on your multi-track are in record mode will accept the signal, while the tracks in safe mode won't. That way, you can feed a 24-track deck without having to constantly repatch. Need 24 more channels without buying a completely new board? Add a 24E expander. It plugs into the expander port. Basically, the 24E is 24 more channel strips with inputs that feed your existing 8-bus console submasters. Unlike some manufacturers who claim to have expander units for their 8-bus consoles, Mackey has created a true extension of our main console. For example, when you solo a channel on the 24E expander, it's routed through the main console solo bus and solo section. Finally, and this concludes the propeller head portion of this already overly long video, we have the 8-bus power supply connection. This is where the funny plug that looks like a super soaker squirt gun nozzle fits. Your 8-bus console should only be powered by the ultra-awesome, multi-mondo, triple-regulated, 220-watt Mackie Designs 8-bus power supply. And now, another episode of Men with 8-Buses and the Women Who Tolerate Them. Hi, honey, I'm home. I'll be downstairs in the studio. Honey, do you want to say hi to the kids first? We have kids? <laughs> Tune in next week when we'll hear Carl say... Fixing the brakes will cost $800. I need a new meter bridge. Can't the brakes wait? <laughs>